is that time, and I thank our folks at uh, home that may be beginning to join us and tune in to uh, our prayer meeting time tonight, so it's good to see everybody here. I hope and pray that uh, you've had a great day. Uh, you probably had to go back into your closet and gla- drag out your winter clothes, uh, and if you hadn't done that today, you probably will need to tomorrow, but uh, it is Mississippi, and you can get your sh- keep your short pants out because by Saturday or what, Monday or whatever, you'll be wearing them again. You know, it's, it's definitely Mississippi. But uh, it's good to be here. Good to see y'all here with us tonight. And I'm just going to voice our prayer. And uh, Ken's going to lead us in a few songs. And uh, then we'll spend our time in a little devotion and uh, prayer time together tonight. So let's pray. Father, thank you so much for a day of life and opportunity that we have, uh, Father, just to follow you. Thank you for the blessings that you give to each and every one of us and our families and our church family, Father, every single day. We are truly blessed beyond measure. Father, I pray for those tonight uh, working with our kids and our young people. Father, the Bible studies we have, the other areas of our church tonight. Father, be a blessing to every area. Be a blessing to every child and young adult and adult. Father, be a blessing just to, to all that's happening, all that's taking place here tonight, Father, uh, at Friendship Baptist Church. I pray your blessings over our time together. Uh, Father, as we just take a few moments and and look into your word, Father, as we definitely spend our time together tonight in prayer. Father, just the requests and things that are on our hearts. Father, we just love you, and we are blessed by you, and we thank you. Uh, So just grant us this time of worship together, Father. Uh, Move among us as only you can, I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Sunday evening at service. An old song came to mind and I mentioned it and it's been stuck in my head ever since then. So I thought, well, we're just going to do it Wednesday night. So if it's new to you, we're going to sing it two or three times and that way it'll be stuck in your head the rest of the week. But it's a great welcome song for a church gathering and it's something, something like this. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight just to see all the happy faces praising God in heavenly places. What a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Now I'm going to slow it down a hair so y'all can join. You've heard it once. We're going to do it two more times. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight just to see all the happy faces Praising God in heavenly places What a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people Now, y'all are doing okay, but there's one thing we got to fix. Y'all ready? When I look out there, you don't look like happy places Praising God in heavenly places. Y'all are like... I know, I'm not much to look at, but y'all can smile if you want to. Go ahead and smile if you don't want to. Let's do it again. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight just to see all the happy faces praising God in heavenly places. What a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Y'all like that? How many of y'all remember it? Good, way more than I was expecting because Sunday night it was like, you know, deer in the headlights. Now, I think I saw three people that said, yeah, I know that. So we're going to jump a little farther back and do a great old hymn now, and I know that you know it. 
I found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my grief has taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tower. I've all for him forsaken and all my idols torn. From my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He'll never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here, while I live by faith and do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. From his manna he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face Where rivers of delight shall ever roll He's the lily of the valley, the bright morning star He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul I know y'all remember that one, I can hear you singing I found another old hymn. You'll know it. But I got to uh, reading the words, and I'll, I keep telling some of these younger guys that are learning to play music in the church, the words are the most important. If you can't hear the words, you're wasting our time. So reading through the words on this one, you see the, the hymn, Oh, 4,000 Tongues to Sing. And it starts off, the writer uh, the big word hyperbole, you could say exaggeration. He says, I love the Lord. I wish not just one tongue to praise him with. I wish I had a thousand. That's what, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. But then all of a sudden in the second verse, this, this hymn preaches a sermon, Brother Tim. The second verse changes instead of him talking to you, the second verse he's talking to God saying, you're going to have to help me do this. Because I want to tell people, but you got to help me. So when we sing this in a second, watch the second verse change to him talking to God. And then the third verse, he swaps back over and he gives his testimony. He gives his testimony. And if you remember when I filled in for Brother Tim here back when he couldn't be here, we talked about giving your testimony is not the gospel. Giving your testimony is the tool that lets you share the gospel. So the third verse, he shares his testimony, and he talks about my sorrows ceasing and his music to my ears, what the Lord's done for me, and he's given me life and health and peace. And then in the fourth verse, he changed over to the gospel, and he says he breaks the power of canceled sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood makes the foulest clean. His blood avail for me. So isn't it cool? Excitement, prayer to God, my testimony, then the gospel. All in four verses. So let's see if we can sing this one, okay? Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. Now here, here comes the prayer. 
My gracious master and my God assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of your name. Jesus, the name that calms my fears, that bids my sorrow cease, Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. And here comes the gospel. He breaks the power of pencil sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean, his blood avail for me. We're going to do that last verse again just because it's a great one. He breaks the power of pencil sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood availed for me. I'm going to share a verse with you tonight out of Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. It says, For while we were still helpless at the appointed moment, Christ died for the ungodly. At just the right time, Christ died for us. It says in verse 7, For rarely will someone die for a just person, though for a good person perhaps someone might even dare to die. But God proves his own love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much, much, much more then, since we have now been declared righteous by his blood, we will be saved through him from wrath. For if while we were sinners, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Let's pray for a moment. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Father, thank you for just a few moments together tonight. Uh, Father, to just kind of focus on what I believe, Father, the greatest act of love. Jesus, what you did for us on the cross, and, and Heavenly Father, what you designed and put into place so that we could have a relationship with you. Father, bless these next few moments and all of our time together. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. For uh, just a kind of a, a moment or two tonight, uh, what do you think about or how does, how does your mind process the idea uh, of Jesus being on the cross? You know, that's a, that's a tough picture. Uh, and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand, and those folks are at home. You don't have to raise your hand because I don't see you, but you can answer the question to yourself. But, but how many folks in our room tonight saw the movie, The Passion of Christ? Just about everybody. Uh, man, that was tough, was it not? You know, I mean, it was just a, a, a movie uh, Mel Gibson directed the movie, and you know, not anything yay or nay against Mel Gibson, but but Mel Gibson directed the movie, and uh, Jim Cavell played the the Jesus Christ in that movie, and basically, it was those last few hours from the time of Christ really being taken uh, prisoner through the time of all of the beating and the suffering and being nailed to the cross and. 
And uh, man, I, I've watched it. Went to the movie theater when it came out. Uh, watched it. And uh, it was tough. It was really, really tough. I, I think about that movie. I, I think about how close it may or may not have been to, to what Jesus actually went through. Uh, most scholars and the people that you talk to and things that we know about what the, what the Romans would have done to Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, it, again, it's, it's Hollywood. I understand that. But it's a pretty close representation. I'll just say it that way. To what actually happened to Jesus Christ. And, and to see that, I mean, to be overwhelmed with the emotion to be overwhelmed with the, the suffering and the scourging, the beating, the, the nails, the thorns, the, the mocking, the shame. Uh, you know, to, to, to see that, not just to, to read about it. You know, because let's be honest, when we, when we read that story biblically, it's a little safer for us. We, we are definitely a, a group of people in the world today that the visual, visual aspect is something that really kind of takes us to the next level and, and so we read about the cross, but then to actually see the cross and to see what he possibly went through is, is just a gut-wrenching kind of thing. And for those of us who, who truly are believers and have watched that movie, man, it was just a difficult, difficult moment. Uh, but when you see that movie... It just kind of gives you really one side of the story, you know, and, and that's really what it was meant for. I mean, it was meant to, to show us the pain and agony and suffering, all of those things from a, a, a physical standpoint uh, and, and a mental standpoint, really, I guess you'd say as well, that, that Jesus went through. But there is so much more to the cross. So much more than just the pain and agony and so much more, so much deeper meaning to what Jesus Christ went through, to what his father led him to do in this, in this plan, this rescue plan uh, of, of, of salvation. You know, we needed so much and it was through the, the avenue of the cross that God was able to, uh, that Jesus, I guess, was able to satisfy for his heavenly father all of those things that we needed that was separating us from him. And so, as we think about the cross and, and tonight's Wednesday, well, we're, we're in the middle of that, that holy week as it's been called. And uh, I guess you'd almost say headed toward the end of that Holy Week. Tomorrow is, is the, uh, the Passion, or, or the Passover, excuse me. Uh, sometime probably today, uh, either today or early in the morning, you know, it's, to know exactly the time frame, it's kind of hard to, to know exactly, but somewhere in the midst of what happened on either Wednesday night or, or early Thursday morning, whatever it may have been, Judas is, is kind of making his deal. You know, so kind of think about that, I guess, too, tonight. What happened on Wednesday night? Well, Judas betrays Christ, and he goes to the Sanhedrin, and he makes the deal for, for 30 pieces of silver. Thursday is when the time when, when you know, the, the Passover happens, and Jesus is there with all 12 of his disciples, including Judas, and he washes their feet, all 12 of them, can you imagine that? I mean, he knew what was going to happen, but he washed Judas' feet anyway, and, and they had the meal, and the 11 then get up and go to the Garden of Gethsemane that Thursday evening, and then the early Friday morning, he's, of course, then taken captive, and everything happens. And then the cross happens. God is carrying out his plan, a rescue plan for mankind. 
And in doing so, he provides for us everything that we need for salvation. So let me just share a few of these words with you. You've heard them before. The first word is redemption. The cross provides us with the redemption that we need. To be redeemed is to buy back. And Jesus, as he paid the price in full by giving his life at just the right moment in time for all the trans transgressions of the world. It was his death that was the ultimate payment that set us free from the bondage of sin. Not that we don't still have sin in our life, but as a child of God and as anyone who will follow through with and, and call Jesus Christ the, the Lord and Savior of their life, <clears throat> that redemption process that happened, <clears throat> excuse me, 2,000 or so years ago applies to everyone. So the cross gives us the redemption that we need. The cross also gives us the forgiveness that we, that, we, you know, that we need. Because of the cross, God could now release us from the punishment that we deserve. Forgiveness. You know, when someone does the crime in a perfect world, and guess what? God is perfect. And when someone does a crime, someone will have to be punished for the crime. You, nobody's getting away with it, okay? You may, you may commit a crime in the world today and get away with it, but you're not going to co commit a crime in the world today from a spiritual standpoint and get away with it. Someone has to pay the price. And it was the cross where Jesus died for you and I, where you and I received our forgiveness. Somebody paid the price, it just wasn't us, which leads us to that word that we hear uh, that we, you know, it's sometimes hard to pronounce and we wonder exactly what it means. Jesus in the cross also is the propitiation of our sin. Jesus dying on the cross was a payment that satisfied the Father. You know, you buy a home. And you go to the bank and you purchase a home and here's your monthly payments and this, that, and the other. And again, the way things are supposed to work in a, in a fair world is you pay these payments for so many years and at the end of paying off the amount, whatever you're supposed to pay and the interest and all of those things, you've paid that last payment, that last penny, and the house becomes yours. Where the only way that we can have a relationship with our Heavenly Father is that that penalty of sin be completely paid off. The wonderful thing about what Jesus did for us on the cross is it's not a partial payment, ladies and gentlemen. He paid the price in full. One hundred percent. He paid the price. He you know, God, our Father demanded this payment. That's the only way it was going to happen. And Jesus allowed himself to hang on a cross to be the propitiation for us so that we may be forgiven. Because of the cross that's there as well, we also are now justified. The justification process that takes place on the basis of Jesus' sacrifice the Lord now declares that as a child of God, you and I are no longer guilty. Now, I know we've all seen enough TV shows and realized enough with Perry Mason from the years on back to, to law and order in my day and time that there's been folks who have faced the, the legal system who were guilty and got away with it. But a lot of times those folks that were guilty are also guilty and found guilty. Well, folks, every single person in the world, we are guilty. 
But when Jesus died for us, he took our punishment. He paid the price. And one day, we will stand before our Heavenly Father. A day of judgment will come. And every single man and woman and child in this world will stand there on that day and will be justified or either not be justified by the blood of Jesus. Those who know Christ will be justified. Those who know him as Lord and Savior will be justified. Those who just know his name, those who just recognize who that word and what that person might or might not be, they will not be justified. We will either be found, well, I'll just say it this way. We'll all be found guilty. But we will be justified by the blood of Christ. And therefore, he has paid our sin. The sin debt that each and every one of us has. And because of his justification that happened on the cross for us, the the last part of what really kind of continues to happen through all of this process of, of dying on the cross, of rising again, of course, is the word reconciliation. Reconciliation. That sin that completely separated us from God. That sin that you and I would never be able to take care of on our own. That sin problem that plagues every single person in this world. That reconciliation comes through the blood that was shed by Jesus Christ on, our, on the cross for our sins. And it has, it has removed that, that cavern, I guess, that separates us from our Father. You've seen a, a picture many times of uh, of a deep ravine below, and you've got, a, 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 I guess, a ledge on this side and, a, and another ledge on this side and this deep ravine in the middle, and maybe you see fire coming up out of that, whatever the, the case may be. Folks want to get across, and there's no way to get across, and as this, the, you know, the picture continues, you see a cross that lays down. And that cross is what bridges the gap. That cross is what reconciles you and I to our Heavenly Father. And it is only because of the crucifixion. The only way to rescue a, a lost humanity is through the death of Jesus Christ. When I think about this, I, I think about the movie. I think about what God's Word says. Man, I wish there had been another way. I, I wish Jesus wouldn't have had to die. I wish it wouldn't have been so cruel. But there was no other way. There was no other way. Listen, I, I, I guess this is my concept of, of my father, my heavenly father. If there had been any other way than Jesus Christ having to die on a cross, God could have figured it out. But somebody, Jesus was the somebody, of course. Jesus had to pay the price. He said in the garden, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus knew that this was the only way. And because there was so much at stake, because we were at stake. Father, not my will, but thy will be done. And so Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He died on the cross for our redemption and our forgiveness to be the propitiation for us, to help us be justified and reconciled because of his willingness to die for us. Judas, somewhere in the midst of this evening, these hours, whatever exact time it may have been, 
is getting ready to betray Christ some, again, few thousand years ago. I want to encourage you and I as we move in these next few days toward Friday, toward the death of Christ, we move toward Sunday, the resurrection of Christ, we never forget what the cross really means for all of us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for just to get a few moments together. Uh, Father, now just to be able to pray together. and Father, just to hear your voice and your spirit among us, I, I ask for your will to be done, O oh Lord. Thank you for how you love us. And Father, for all the ways that you continue to bless us over and over again. Words are not enough. So, Father, help us to live our life to show you how much we love you. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's, a, again, a blessing to be able to be here with you tonight and to worship together, to pray together tonight. For those folks that are <clears throat> at home and if you've been joining us through our devotional time, music time, uh, it's been a blessing. And if you're just tuning in, whatever the case may be, uh, we're fixing to move into our prayer time together. And so if you are at home and you've got a prayer request you would like to share with us, please uh, just put it in the comment section there and I'll make sure everybody here uh, gets to hear that and we'll just pray over that as well as the other uh, aspects of prayer that we have uh, tonight as well. So uh, you see there from a sympathy standpoint, we've got a few that we have written down. The first one is uh, Mr. Roy, Roy Taylor family there. Uh, the service is tomorrow at Bellevue Baptist Church in uh, Tennessee. And uh, of course, related to, to folks within our church as a brother, and uh, as things of that nature. And so we just want to pray for him and, and his family. And I think my understanding he'd been sick for a while. And uh, so just want to pray for him. And uh, for my, all, again, all understandings uh, as well, a, a good uh, believer in Christ. And so gone on to be with the Lord. And so we, uh, we are uh, just praying for his family there. Uh, Mary Francis' self family as well. This is Kenny Self's mother. Uh, passed away yesterday. Uh, tomorrow at Mount Pisgah Baptist Church uh, will be the services there. Uh, visitation from 10 to 11. And then the service time is at 11. Uh, burial there at Moore's Memorial Cemetery in Carroll County. And so the Francis are the self family. We want to pray for them through this time. And then Bubba Lehman's family there. Uh, he was someone who's very active, my understanding, here from Emmaus and part of that community there. And so you may know him as well. Uh, but be in prayer for the Lehman family uh, as he has passed away and uh, gone to be with the Lord as well. <clears throat> Do you have anyone else? Have we missed someone or somebody that you know of that has passed away and a uh, family we need to mention and pray for tonight? Anybody else? Okay. Well, just continue to be in prayer uh, for those folks and those families and others as well. Uh, I'm sure that we uh, may or may not know about through this time. Uh, we've got and we've been praying for uh, little six-year-old Mason Mims. Uh, he's now finally out of the hospital. Been in Houston, Texas there. Uh, uh, even though he's staying close to the hospital there in Texas, he's at least out of the hospital uh, supposed to do some other tests, heart cath, and some other things today. Hopefully, he'll be cleared soon to be able to come home. And and uh, as a you know, six-year-old children, a lot of times they bounce back real quickly, and that's a great blessing. And we're praying for that. And uh, but I know that his family is is at least glad to be out of the hospital for a little bit. Uh, and so we want to just uh, pray blessings over them as well. Uh, a friend of mine, Lee Fowler, is. Uh, 
the pastor at uh, First Baptist Church, Terry, and uh, his son Rankin, uh, as well, has been in Batson there in Jackson, had some issues there. Uh, they believe that, uh, you know, maybe it's a little a tumor of some kind in the brain. And uh, they they hoping he was, you know, feeling well enough to get to come home for a few days or a few weeks, kind of build his strength up before they do a biopsy and kind of go on from there. So uh, just pray for the Fowler family as well and uh, for their son Rankin. And uh, just pray God will heal him. Uh, you know, I'd love, and I know they their prayers are that, you know, he gets to come home and stay home for a few weeks, and they go back and do a test, and it's disappeared. Uh, man, what a blessing and, and uh, miracle that would be. And I promise you from that family, God will receive the glory in the midst of that as well. Uh, Mr. Ricky is, is helping with our young people tonight, but he's got a friend, Mike Mitchell, uh, and he has uh, asked us to pray for Mike Mitchell tonight. And so be in prayer for him. No other details, just praying for Mike. Uh, to battling, cancer. battling cancer, okay, and so uh, pray for for his friend uh, Mike there and their family and the whole situation uh, related there as well. No, oh, I flip over and I see him on the on the other side. So I should have opened my page up bigger. I'm sorry for that. Uh, others that we remember in prayer, Miss Norma Caldwell. She's at home now, uh, thinking that she needs to do some changes to her meds and. And different things like that. So just be in prayer for Miss Norma. Uh, she's feeling better and uh, everything else. But uh, just pray for her and they get all these blood pressure and some things under control uh, for her. I know Miss Linda uh, has this week left uh, of radiation. Uh, I think they're going to see a doctor tomorrow as well. Uh, and so just continue to pray for her. Uh, talk with him with Ronnie this week. She's just weak, and of course, with radiation and the chemo pills, and it's a lot uh, on the body. And so, pray for her and the whole family through this time, and uh, just pray that things will continue to go in the right direction. Uh, but they'll know more, I'm sure, tomorrow as well. Mr. Is her yes, yeah, Robert, uh, Mr. Taylor would be Jenny's uh, father-in-law as well. So a lot going on in that family uh, there as well. Uh, continue to pray for Miss Mary Dale as well. She's, uh, of course, at home right now and just having some issues. Uh, they have a doctor's appointment next Wednesday. They've had some tests done, and hopefully next Wednesday they'll kind of have a little idea of exactly what's happening and, and taking place there. So uh, we want to be in prayer for, for them as they uh, have another week, a week to wait and kind of figure out what, uh, what's going on there as well. Uh, and then also we've got Mr. Charles Nichols uh, as well, uh, Melissa Neely's father who's not doing well and I uh, want to continue to pray, uh, pray for him. Uh, pray for, for all those within our church and, uh, you know, folks that uh, have been sick and getting over that. And I know we've mentioned Miss Irene and many others uh, we want to pray for those who have lost loved ones within our church and are just dealing with that as well. We want to pray for each other and uh, some that are spoken requests, some that are unspoken uh, requests. And you see those battling cancer and other illnesses and just names that we have uh, here on our prayer list. We want to continue to be in prayer for all of those. Sarah. Yeah, Miss Sarah Dixon, that's right. She uh, had her gallbladder removed and, and everything else and just trying to recover from that and, and on top of the, the COVID that she had as well. And so uh, she's, you know, just trying to recover. And uh, so just continue to be in prayer for her and her family and, you know, again, taking care of each other, uh, all the things that are there as well. You see the other names and things that are listed there. Uh, I've got a, a praise that I'm going to share with you, but I'm going to give you an opportunity. What, what's something good that's going on? And I've got a praise that has nothing to do with me. It is something family-wise uh, that I was reminded of and I wanted to share with you in a, in a moment. But what's a praise that you have tonight? Anybody? Well, I get... Get them back in about a month. 
there will either be no adopted and she'll be adopted. Okay, so an adoption process for a, a grandbaby that's headed in the right direction. And so that's a praise, without a doubt. I'll go ahead and tell you mine while y'all think of something else to come up with. Uh, 72 years ago today, and uh, Grady accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So today is his spiritual birthday. And he called me a little while ago, and he said, man, I really want to be at church tonight on his spiritual birthday. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, this may be one of the few times especially if his spiritual birthday fell on a Sunday or a Wednesday, uh, one of the few times that he probably hasn't been in church, to be honest with you. Uh, but it is 72 years ago, and he, uh, he remembers things of that nature, and uh, that is a blessing uh, for our family as well. So uh, long, long time loving and serving the Lord. And so uh, praise the Lord for that. But anybody else, a spiritual uh, blessing today? Okay. So, I mean, that is a blessing. Yeah. First 20 years been dealing with a family issue of parents and, yeah. Been a long time. Okay. Okay. Been struggling with it for a long time and everything's good. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Yes, sir. All the things that, that Christ has done for us this week, uh, you know, if there's ever a, a, a Super Bowl week for Christianity, man, this is it. You know, this, this is our Super Bowl Sunday coming up. Uh, you, know, uh, it's, you know, it's when the championship is won, so to speak. And uh, man, praise the Lord for what he's done. And uh, what a blessing it is for all of us. And, uh, and don't, don't, ever, don't ever get so used to the fact of being a believer and of, of Easter and Christmas and those spiritual moments. Don't ever get so used to them that they don't mean what they ought to mean to all of us. Uh, you know, some of you in this room have, have experienced Easter for quite a few years in your life. But Easter is still special every single year. And honestly, as a Christian, every single day, you know, we, we think about that. Yes, sir. Amen. All right, I'm going to say that again because the folks at home didn't get to hear that and then just to make sure everybody else here did too. Mr. Bubba Lamb that passed away Sunday evening sometime. He was watching a, a TV show, program of some kind there and talked about observing the Lord's Supper and about an hour before he passed away, he and his wife got together in their home with some crackers and a little grape juice and observed the Lord's Supper together. And then he passed on and went to be with the Lord. Man, that's, I like that. Praise the Lord for that. You know. And hey, that, that's, not, that's not being a show off. Man, that's stuff they did in their home. That's, that's being a child of God in your house. You know, that's where it's real. You know, that's not putting on anything fake or, or anything like that out in the world. This is just being a child of God at home. And that's a child of God who went home. <laughs> I like that. Man, there's so many blessings uh, that we have. I know we all have those. Uh, some we want to talk about and some we don't have to talk about. That's okay. And, and I know for those folks that are at home and, and watching with us tonight, I, I mean, I know there's so many blessings that we all enjoy. 
and all experience and and uh, man, just don't ever don't ever lose don't ever lose the idea of just being grateful and thanking the Lord and sharing sharing that. I I, I mean I, that's a to me that's a beautiful story that I'm glad she, I'm glad his wife shared that. You know, that's a testimony uh, of who he was, but also a testimony of just Christ. And, uh, you know, we have those moments in our own life. And, uh, you know, they're not all maybe just of that, like that story, but, but you've got a story to tell as well. You know, Ken made the moment, uh, talking a little earlier ago about testimonies. And, you know, testimony is, yes, we know what Christ has done, but what has Christ done in our life? That's your testimony. And my testimony for my life. And man, that's the story we share. And uh, when we share that story, folks around us want to know, well, how did all that happen? And well, it happened because of Jesus in my life. That's when you get to share that story and his testimony of all that he's done for us. I hope and pray that as we move throughout the rest of this week, uh, I want to encourage you if you're at home and, and watching and uh, you know, if you're able to come and, and join us Sunday morning at worship time here uh, on Resurrection Sunday, uh, we will have our, our service, our Sunday school at 9:45 to 10:15. Uh, we haven't expanded that yet. We're gonna, we're kind of waiting on that a little bit longer. Uh, but we are back together in one worship service at 10:30, and even you know Easter Sunday morning 10:30, we'll be here together. And, uh, and I'm not going to guarantee that you're going to get out at 1130. It might be a few minutes extra, okay? But you don't have to come back Sunday night, so it'll be all right. Uh, and so I've got to almost get two sermons in in one time, and that's not really true either, but y'all understand. It'll be okay. But I look forward to Sunday, and I look forward to coming here together and, and worshiping together. And if you're not able to join us here in person, of course, you know, because we are so blessed with the gentlemen upstairs, You'll continue to have that opportunity as long as the Internet's working and, and, you know, the old devil doesn't get in the computer. Now, that can happen, okay? It is computers. But uh, as long as we don't have any technical difficulties or things like that, you'll be able to watch our services from home and, and receive that blessing there as well. But, man, I, I look forward to Sunday. I look forward to every Sunday. Uh, but I really look forward to a time of just celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior and what that means to all of us as, child, as, as a child of God. And so we are blessed, truly blessed, beyond measure. Any other prayer request that you have with us tonight? Anything else? Okay, bow with me for just a moment. Father, I want to thank you for this evening and our time together tonight, thanking you, Father, for the wonderful blessings that you have given to us, Father. Thanking you, Father, for what the cross means to each and every one of us. Father, as we, we think about that cross, we, we all see a picture of what you went through, Father, of, of why you went through it. And, Father, it all boils down to the fact that you just love us. And so thank you. Thank you for a love for us that was so great that you sent your son Jesus and the willingness of Christ, his love for us was so great that he was willing to die on a cross for our sins. Oh, your love for us was so great, Father, that even after the resurrection when he left, you didn't leave us alone. You have sent a Holy Spirit to come into our lives and to be a comforter to us, Father, to lead us and guide us and help us to live for you. And so, Father, do just that. Help us to live for you. Father, I pray that as we move through this Holy Week, Father, as these next days in front of us, we see the, the Passover, Father, and that, that meal of, of what it means, Father, but oh, how... It moves into that Friday and the death of Christ to Saturday in a, in a time of so many just wondering what was going on. But, oh, Father, it leads to Sunday. Sunday is coming. And, Father, in that we see the resurrection, a stone that has been rolled away. Father, a moment in time that changed time. 
And Father, we are truly blessed because of this. I pray that, Father, even now you will begin to move in the hearts of of those within our community and church to come and be a part of our worship time together Sunday, Father, that everything we do, all for your honor and your glory, Father, will just move us and move among us in a way that, oh, we can only do nothing but celebrate who you are. So thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for your life and death and resurrection. And thank you, Spirit, for being here with us tonight. In your presence, we come. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming and being here tonight. And for those folks at home, God bless you. And we'll hopefully see you Sunday. Uh, Guys.